Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion about scaled figures and define a word called similarity or similar figures. So luckily, this video is really nothing new. We're just going to put some new vocab and notation of what we've already been studying. And that connects to my informal explanation. So when we say shapes are similar, that means that uh, the similar shapes are scaled copies. So we spent a lot of time talking about scaled factors for this reason. They're scaled copies of one another. So would they be exactly the same? No, but they would be the same shape, but scaled versions. So that means same shape, different size. Um, so now more formally, two shapes are similar if okay, corresponding angles are congruent. Right, because scaled copies are the exact same shape. So like A would be the same angle as E, B would be the same angle as F, C would be the same angle as G, and H would be the same angle as D. So all the angles are the same, it's just one's bigger than the other. They're scale um, versions of the other. So like maybe this one's half the size of this one. So corresponding angles are congruent, which means they're exactly the same. Whereas corresponding sides, corresponding side lengths, are proportional. Okay, what it means when I say corresponding sides are proportional, it means they're not the same, but they're scaled versions of one another. You keep hearing that word scaled come up. Okay, so an example of this is, like, if this side were 10 and this were half the size, this would be 5. So they're not the same side lengths, but they're proportionate. So when I say they're scaled versions, all sides would have the same scaled factor. Same scale. Okay, so if this side is half, then if this side were, like, 8, this side would have to be 4. So they're proportionately um, similar to each other. Now, in terms of notation, um, just like we had a symbol for congruent, the symbol for congruent was this symbol here. Um, that's not the symbol for similarity, though. So congruent is made up of two things. It's made up of the equal sign, and it's made up of the similar sign. So the squiggly line on top of the congruent symbol is the symbol for similarity. So what it means is, um, for congruent shapes, is that they're similar and equal. That means they're congruent, they're exactly the same. Whereas similar... Similarity and similar figures, um, they're only similar, they're not equal. So an example of a similar statement would be like triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Okay, and if you see the symbol, you know they're similar. Okay, which I've kind of outlined in this image down here as well. Um, and it just says what I said above. So if ABC is similar to DEF, this would be the correct mathematical way to say it. We'd say angle A is the same or congruent to angle D, so they're the same angles, but the sides are not equal. So this side C is not the same as side C, which you can clearly see, but the ratios of all the sides should be equal because what the ratios really calculate is the scale factor. Okay, so DE divided by AB should be the same thing. So let's see, DE divided by AB should be the same thing is... Um, DF divided by AC because they have the same scale factor and when you divide them you're really calculating the scale. Um, so in terms of why does this make sense, what I'm referring to is why does this piece here make sense, that the ratios are all equal. I'd like you to explain this in your own words based on what I just talked about. If you need to go back and re-listen to me, go ahead and do that. So we're just going to focus on notation for this video. Um, so we're going to write similarity statements for the following figures. Um, now, there's lots of different ways you can see similar figures. They can be nested inside one another. So, like, you may not see two similar triangles, but there actually are two triangles here. So, there's the big triangle, and we're saying that that's similar to the smaller triangle, which is the one that's nested inside of it. Okay, or they can be separated, but these are still attached. So, like, here's a triangle, and we're saying it's similar to the smaller triangle that's flipped upside down over here. Okay, so if I were to write a similar statement, um, it's very similar to writing a congruent statement where corresponding parts have to match up. So like, for example, angle A has to match up with the angle that's congruent to that angle. So order does matter. Um, so if I look at the two triangles, ABE is a smaller triangle here. So we go from A to B to E, that's that triangle. 
Okay, we want to say that's similar to this bigger triangle out here. So which angle would angle A correspond to? Well, in the bigger triangle, we have three angles, A, C, and D. So A is going to be congruent to itself because these two triangles share that angle. So we're going to list A first. So A and A should be in the same position because they're the same angle. Now, in terms of the you know, bigger triangle versus the smaller triangle and the last two angles, um, if you remember stuff from the unit three, I believe it was, we have some parallel lines here. So those little arrows mean that these two lines are parallel. So if we have parallel lines, that means corresponding angles are congruent. So we can say that this is the transversal, for example. So if this is the transversal, um, then these two angles would be congruent because they are in the same position, right? So this one's on top of the parallel line into the right of the transversal, and this one's also on the top right, so those are congruent. So B would be congruent to C, and similarly, D would be congruent to E because there are corresponding angles to this transversal. This is top and this is left, this is top left. Okay, so we have A is congruent to A, B is congruent to C, and D is congruent to E. So we're kind of like connecting everything you've learned in lots of units together here. So let's write that similarity statement. So if B is in the second position, it's corresponding angle C, so C would have to be next. If E is in the third position, E is congruent to D, so D would have to be next. And that's how you'd write a similarity statement with order mattering. You can try this one on your own. Okay, there's a couple more things we can do. Um, let's say you know they're similar. Can we label the diagrams? So I know that ABC is congruent to XYZ. Again, order matters. So like wherever this angle is on here would have to be the same as A. So A and X are in the same position. They have to be the same angle, except this is a scaled down version. So like that's the long skinny angle here. That'd be that one here. Whereas B up here is like the widest angle. So that'd be up here. And C down here would be congruent to this one. So if it goes from A to B to C, blue goes with blue. So A goes with X. I'd call this X. Um, B is here, so B corresponds to Y, that'd be Y, and C corresponds to Z, so if this C and this angle are congruent, this has to be Z, and you can try this one on your own. Okay, 3B says, if you're given some angles, could you find the me measure of a missing angle? So let's label what we see to figure out what this is really asking. So it says ACB is 50, so that goes from ACB, but this angle here is 50. And it says ABC is 90. So from A to B to C, that creates this angle is 90. Now it wants you to find Y, X, Z. So from Y to X to Z, that's this angle here. The funny thing is I didn't give you any angles on here. All you know is that these two shapes are similar. So if I can figure out all the angles on here, they should be congruent to all the angles on here. So if this is 90, this is 50, I don't know what A is, so therefore I don't know what X is. But I can find them because what do all the angles in a triangle add up to be? They all add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus 90 plus 50, actually maybe I'll do 90 plus 50 first. So how many angles are taking, taken up? So 90 plus 50 would give me 140. There are 140 degrees taken. That means there should be 40 degrees left for angle A. And if angle A is 40, X has to be the same because they're similar. So that means the measure of that angle would be 40 as well. So that's a way you could apply similar shapes. Okay, the last one says to draw your own picture. So we're gearing up for like some data right here where we have to draw a diagram. And you want to answer the following questions about whether these ratios are true or false. Because we know if these two shapes are similar, so if PQR is similar to LMN, then the sides should be proportionate, but it has to be the corresponding sides that are proportionate. So let's draw a picture. And you can draw this triangle whatever you want. You can make a right triangle, you can make an equilateral triangle, you can make it uh, not any of those. I don't really care. Um, draw your favorite triangle. But I'm just going to call it P, Q, R. The most important thing is that if they're similar, it's going to look, or the other triangle is going to look the same, um, but it's going to be a scaled version of it. So maybe I'll draw it to be smaller. And P and L should be the same angle. Q and M should be the same angle. And R and N should be the same angle. So I'll call this L, M, N. And it wants to know if these ratios are true or false. So basically you have to say, like, are the corresponding parts in the same place? So the first one says PQ over LM. So PQ is here. LM is here. So if I take this side and divide it by this side, is that the same scale as PR over LN? 
And this would be yes, because PQ and LM are in the same position on those triangles, and PR and LN are in the same position. And we go from big triangle to small triangle, again, big triangle, small triangle, so this is consistent, and this would be a yes. Now, I want you to try the rest of these on your own and figure out if B, C, D are true or false. So that's what similar shapes are. Essentially, they're just scaled versions of one another. We learn the notation. There are some for you to practice. Um, but right now, we're just practicing notation, and then we'll go into, like, how can I compute different things with them by setting up proportions. Thanks for listening.